Welcome to Unit 2, Lab 1, Page 3, Keeping Score with Global Variables. In the last video, we finished our number guessing game and we only used script variables to handle the storage of the secret number as well as the number of guesses the player had made. On the first page of this lab, I mentioned that you should try to use script variables as much as possible and to avoid using global variables. I'm going to explain the difference between the two here, but before I do, I want to go over something really important. In other programming languages, instead of calling them script variables, programmers will refer to them as local variables. So if you hear me say local variables, what I mean are script variables. Global variables, on the other hand, in Snap, are still called global variables outside of Snap. So it's just script variables that have a different name. And now for some advanced stuff. I'm going to be talking about where different variables can be accessed from. The location where I can access a given variable is known as its scope. So a global variable has a global scope, meaning that any global variable can be accessed from anywhere in the entire program. Whereas a local variable, or a script variable, has a local scope. Its scope is contained to the block that it's found in. Script variables can only be accessed by the script or the block of code that they're connected to. So if we have two separate scripts like we do on screen right here, neither script has access to the other script's variables because each variable has a different scope. So look at that, you're learning programming lingo already. So on screen we have two scripts, one named one and one named two. You can see that the value of the script variable banana in one or block one is set to yellow. So if I run block one, the sprite will say yellow for two seconds. And let me do that just to check. Perfect. Even if I drag banana from block one to block two, let's say I place it inside of the say block, it's not going to do anything or it shouldn't do anything because it should not be able to access banana outside of this scope. So let me hit apply, let me hit two, and that's exactly the error that we wanted to see. A variable of name banana does not exist in this context. That's a great error because it tells us exactly why our script doesn't run as intended. And I know what you're thinking. What if we connect block two to block one? Then will it run? Let's see. So I'm gonna click on the block, it says yellow for two seconds, and then we get an error. So even if they're connected like this, block two will not be able to access block one's variables. So let's get rid of banana in block two because it doesn't work. It's outside of block one's scope. Let me drag banana out of here. And the cool thing about script variables is that I could even create a script variable inside of block two named banana and it would not or should not interfere with banana in block one. So let me drag this banana over here. But actually, if you look carefully, we have a problem. We haven't set banana. So right now it's going to be set to undefined or maybe snap will like show it as zero. But let me set it to something just so we can run this and see if it works. So let me set this banana to rotten hit apply, and now when I run it, it should say yellow, and then say rotten for two seconds each. Of course, you should only use the same variable name if it makes sense to do so, but I'm just doing it here to prove a point. In a simple project such as the number guessing game, we could have gotten away with using global variables instead of script variables for every single variable, but it would not have been good practice to do so. Because if we then work on a complex project, one with many abstractions, blocks inside of blocks, dozens of variables, it can become very difficult to keep track of the value of all of the global variables. And you might accidentally overwrite a global variable's value with the command block and then create a debugging nightmare if things don't work correctly and you don't know where things went wrong and why. Using script variables has the added benefit of making you think about keeping different parts of your program separate from one another or more modular. So this is good because if you have different people working on different parts of the program, then when they're done, you could put it all together without having to worry about the variable names and maybe one variable or one part of the program overwriting another and then causing problems and then having to debug that is just terrible. In this lab, we're going to go back to an old lab that we created a long time ago, Unit 1, Lab 1, Click Alonzo, and we're going to improve on that. So what we want to do is open up our Click Alonzo project. So I'm going to go to File, Open, 
click Alonzo, and when it's open, the first thing I want to do is rename it. I want to save it as a different project so that any changes I make here won't overwrite my original Click Alonzo project. So let's do that. Let's go to File, Save As, and I'm going to name it U2L1 Click Alonzo. So now it's going to be a separate file. Next, we want to create a global variable named Score. And here's how we do it. We go over to the Variables palette, click on Make a Variable, and now we can name it something. So let's name this score. And I hit OK. And I've just created my first global variable. So now if I created different scripts or different sprites, all of them can access score. We're going to use the score variable to keep track of the player's score by first initializing it to zero at the beginning of the game and then making the program change the value every time I click Alonzo. So let's do the first part first. Let's initialize score to zero at the beginning of the game. So I think the beginning of the game will be when the green flag is clicked. We want to make sure that we set score to zero. It's always good practice to initialize your variables every single time that you declare them. Next, we want to change the value of score by one each time that Alonzo is clicked. So to do that, we can use the change block found over here in the variables palette. And let's put it right underneath change ghost effect. I don't want to put it inside of the forever block because if I do that, then forever the score will keep going up. And actually, I have to make sure that I set or I specifically say that I'm going to change the score by one. On the AP exam, this same line will look like this. If we want to make snap look like that, we can do that by bringing over the addition operator and then bringing over score, the global variable, and adding one to that. This has the same effect as changing score by one, but in this case, it looks more like the AP Computer Science Principles version. Now that we've done everything required, let's actually run our program to make sure that it works correctly. So I'm going to click on the green flag button, and Alonzo says, welcome to the game. And when I click on him, he's going to start moving around, and we can see that the score increased by one. Now when I click on him again, the score should be two, and it says three. So I just clicked on Alonzo and it went to three instead of two. Now let me click on him again and see what happens. And now he goes to seven. So clearly something's wrong. We have a bug here. Now, if we look back at our code, we're doing, oh, here's what we're doing wrong. We're changing the score by score plus one. So it looks like we keep adding on every, like the previous score is going to be added on to the, to the new score. And then we add one to that. So by that logic, if we click on Alonzo again, so right now score is set to seven, so Alonzo is going to set chain score by seven plus one, which is eight, so then Alonzo's new score is going to be 15. Let me click on him, and his new score is 15. Yes, we found a bug, and that's probably because I used the wrong block, and if we look over here at the instructions, we can see that we should have used the set block instead of the change block. So. I could still bring this code over, but we're not using the change block unless we're going to use change score by one. Otherwise, we have to reset the score every single time. And that's what we're doing here. It's almost like we're reinitializing the score. And now that I think everything's correct, let me test and debug it one more time. So I'm going to click on Alonzo, and that was one click. Let me click on him again. That was the second click. The score is two. Let me click on him again. The score is three, and again, the score is four. So it looks like Alonzo is working perfectly. Let me just keep clicking on him until he disappears completely. So it took maybe six or seven clicks before Alonzo completely disappeared. But right now, the game won't stop. I can start clicking around the screen, and if I end up clicking on him by chance, then my score will continue to go up. So the game doesn't really end until someone clicks the green flag right now, which isn't really a good way to end the game either. So what we want to do is if you have a partner, make sure you talk to them about what you can do, what score you can use to make the game end, which I think is going to be either six or seven in this case. And then we want to use a conditional statement, which means if else, and make sure we end the game when the score gets reached. So let's do that. I think we want to check the score whenever we click on Alonzo. And let's see, let's bring it over. Let's go over to the control block and let's bring over an if else. So in BJC, they tell us that when the score is reached, we should stop all but this script. 
so that Alonzo stops jumping around. So let's see how we're going to do this. When we click Alonzo, let's check to see if the score equals our maximum score. So let's do that. So if score equals, let me grab the score variable. So if score equals, let's say six for now. So that means that the game should end. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the stop all but this script block. Stop all but this script. So that Alonzo stops jumping around. Next, it says to make Alonzo appear again. So I'm going to use this block from down here, set ghost effect to zero. I'm going to duplicate it over here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to bring it up here. But I can't put it underneath the stop. So I'm going to have to put it above. Let me bring this one down a little bit. Okay, so let's see. So when the score equals six, we're going to set the ghost effect to zero. So that's going to make Alonzo appear again. We want to then congratulate the player for a few seconds. So I'm going to go over to looks and say congratulations. You've won for two seconds. And then we want to handle what's going to happen if the score hasn't reached six. So let's say we're five, four, three, two, one. We just want to do everything else. So I'm going to bring everything underneath or into the else portion of this conditional. Now let's test it. When I click on the green flag, it's going to say welcome to the game. And when I start clicking on Alonzo, as soon as I get to six, the next time I click Alonzo, everything else is going to stop. There we go. Congratulations, you've won. And Alonzo just stopped completely. So with the way I've written this, when the score equals six, Alonzo is barely visible. So on the next click, he's going to disappear completely. And that works for what I'm trying to accomplish here. Now, if I want to start the game over, I hit the green flag and I'm able to start again. So then I can start clicking on Alonzo again. And when the score reaches six, that means that we have one more click left. And he says, congratulations, you've won. Now's a good time to save our work. And I will see you guys in the next video.